So we're going to go through the basics, okay? Um, and this is really basic. I actually deleted probably half of the slides this morning because it, it was getting too long. So you um, please forgive me sometimes for the simplicity of, of the information I'm providing. Uh, you will be able, you or your doctor, be able to um, get more details and more detailed presentations soon on clinicoptimizers.com, um, which is a, a company that I created with a friend of mine to provide uh, education to physicians that uh, want to start, um, you know, uh, treating men or and women uh, with hormones and also, um, you know, weight loss options, etc. So, anyway, it's a change of hormones as we age. Uh, as you can tell, these are different hormones, estrogen, thyroid, progesterone, insulin, testosterone, cortisol, growth hormone. And this is uh, not only male uh, related, but also uh, females. And most hormones, as you can tell, go down with age, except insulin and, uh, and cortisol. Insulin, uh, we become more and more insulin resistant. And our cortisol, which is an inflammatory um, hormone, and stress hormone also increases. So, um, which also, both those two trends of increased insulin and cortisol also makes us um, gain more weight, more fat, uh, get more inflammation and more uh, chronic illnesses that are related to aging. So um, today I'm only going to focus on one of them, testosterone. Uh, we eventually, I will have a lecture on each one of these hormones um, to, uh, for you guys to, to watch, so uh, stay tuned. Okay, next one. So testosterone, um, the target organs. Um, testosterone is an androgenic hormone. Um, the world, when you say testosterone, equates that hormone to males. And the fact is that not only men have it, but also women. Uh, women have it at a tenth of uh, concentration that men have in their bloodstream. But in, in the target organs are, are pretty much common, except obviously for a penile um, organ, um, when it comes to effects of testosterone. So testosterone uh, has um, effects on hair growth, uh, balding, uh, sebum production that causes sometimes acne. Uh, liver actually, it, it improves, promotes the synthesis of proteins in the liver. Um, and when it comes to male sexual organs, um, it's responsible for uh, penile growth, um, spermatogenesis, which is a, a create, uh, production of sperm, prostate growth and function. For, in, in the brain, it actually affects uh, libido and mood. In the muscle, increases, it increases uh, strength and, and muscle volume. In the kidneys, it actually stimulates the uh, production, I'm sorry, there's some misspelling there, stimulates production of uh, red blood cells. In the bone marrow, it, it stimulates um, of stem cells. And bone, uh, it accelerates the linear growth closure in, in, um, in, in, um, in, in young, in growing um, boys and girls. So it is also obviously associated with bone density. And what are the um, effects of having low testosterone? And I'll, spare, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the different slides and coming up on explaining what low testosterone means and the ranges, et cetera. But the, one of the effects is sexual dysfunction or lack of interest in sex, some erectile dysfunction, um, decrease of a uh, sense of well being, increase uh, irritation or moodiness decrease red blood cells um, you know, to the point that somebody can become anemic, uh, decrease bone mineral density, decrease lean body mass, muscle strength, and increase in fat mass. So, and as you can tell, a lot of all of them uh, could be associated with aging, but in fact is that um, normalizing testosterone blood levels can um, reverse um, most of these effects. And this is where uh, most of the controversy and discussion occurs, even in 2018, when it comes to um, defining what's normal testosterone, where are the normal ranges. And believe it or not, it not only depends on the guidelines, um, committees and medical groups, but also on the different lab companies, you know, uh, like LabQuest and, I'm sorry, lab, LabCorp and Quest and other lab companies have different ranges, believe it or not, because they have 
uh, they gather that data from their own database on the, the spread of uh, testosterone in, in, in men that actually use, and women that use their, <clears throat> their companies. But in general, it's probably safe to, to say that um, the total testosterone, and I'll, speak, I'll, I'll explain what that means, total and free testosterone that's coming up. Uh, they range anywhere from 350 to 1100 in men and uh, from 10 to 50 nanograms per deciliter. By the way, these are nanograms per deciliter. For people watching uh, the webinar from outside the United States, the, the units are, are different. Now, usually we talk about um, micromolars per, you know, per um, liter or, or, or other units like that. So I apologize for that, but that's, these are units uh, used, uh, used in the States. So the symptoms of low testosterone, as I said, fatigue, low or lack of sex drive, poor appetite, loss of uh, muscle mass and strength, depression, and, and others. The effect of age on testosterone, age-related decline begins around 30 to 40 years of age and approximately 1.2% testosterone is, is uh, lost every year. And, and obviously that loss can be accelerated by different factors that I'll be covering soon. The average testosterone of a man uh, 75 years of age, uh, compared to, um, to a younger man of 25 years of age, total is about 35% and bioavailable, I'll speak about what bioavailable means, is 50%. However, many men in the seventh or eighth uh, decade have normal testosterone levels. So this is not, 100% of a rule for everybody. So men are healthy enough or lucky enough um, to not have testosterone um, deficiency when they're, they're older. Excuse me. And also uh, something that um, we forget sometimes is that um, the, the circadian rhythm um, actually promotes the production of most hormones at night and uh, the uh, testosterone peaks early in the morning, uh, around four to six uh, a.m. And it peaks both in men and uh, older men and younger men. But as you can tell in this, in this graph, younger men obviously have uh, higher levels and higher peak. The difference between older, um, the higher, but effects are blunted by age. So you can tell in the older men, there's not as much of a peak and it's more of a, constant blood level throughout the day. And that happens uh, in most uh, aging men. So what, what testosterone level is defined as low? And this is another point of uh, controversy and, and discussion. I mean, and I don't think we're ever going to have groups, medical groups agree. Uh, although we're getting closer, as you can tell on this table, but these are different medical groups the European Academy of Andrology, the European Association of Urology, uh, the International Society of Andrology, the International Society for the Study of the Aging Male, and the Endocrine uh, Society. So uh, the first three agree, and that was a guidelines of 2009, that anything under 350 nanograms per deciliter, or for guys um, outside the United States, is 12.1 nanomolars per liter and free testosterone uh, less than 65 uh, picograms per milliliters. Um, the TES, which is Endocrine Society, um, I think they just posted a new guidelines where it's more or less the same value, 300. Um, and, they say, and this agreement here too. So um, on the Europeans, 350, and believe it or not, there is a group of experts that got together in 2014 these are high prescribers. Um, doctors have a lot of experience that agree that um, anything under 400 nanograms is, is considered low. So um, there's no agreement. Um, it, uh, insurance companies um, vary too in, when it comes to approval of testosterone um, therapies. Uh, most of them go by, are going now by 300 to 350. Uh, you also have to have the symptoms and obviously a blood test that proves that. Um, for uh, clinics that do not take insurance, uh, cash-based uh, clinics, they tend to be a little bit more, um, you know, um, flexible when it comes to testosterone blood levels. 
up to 500 nanograms if you have um, symptoms of low testosterone. So it depends obviously whether or not you're going to be getting um, products from that are paid by your insurance company or if you're going to be using, for instance, a compounding pharmacy. I'll be explaining what compounding pharmacies do and, and, and what the different changes in that industry are as we speak. I also reviewed um, a few studies. Um, I didn't write the references here because there are too many, but you can also, you can go to excelmail.com. I have this information with references. But these are different studies that have actually linked uh, different levels of testosterone in, in, uh, and, and risks of different uh, pathologies or diseases or, or issues or health issues. Uh, less than 450, um, uh, this study linked that to a risk uh, of increased metabolic syndrome, which is increased in fat mass, uh, waist circumference, low HDL, um, high triglycerides, uh, et cetera. Less than 400 in another study uh, linked to venous leakage, which is um, internal penile damage that uh, affects erectile function. Less than 350, um, a study actually linked that to all cause death risk and anemia risk. Less than 300, lower libido, weight gain, and diabetes risk increased. Less than 300, um, increased uh, risk of uh, fractures memory-related uh, issues, the depression risk increases, less than 250. Uh, in one other study, increased arterial plaque and uh, decreased uh, sleep quality. Less than 235 in another study, hardening of the arteries, and less than 200, uh, decrease in morning erections, and less than 150, increased inflammation. So as you can tell, uh, 300 or so, 350, 300, it's kind of a midpoint in, in all this data. And so it, it actually makes sense so far. What the guidelines have been saying is not far off from what studies are showing when it comes to increased risks of uh, different health, health issues.